Right, hello there guys, welcome to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today we're going to be taking a look at Perforce and Source Control integrated into Unreal Engine. Um, so instead of taking a look at Blueprints, today we're going to be taking a look at how you can work with your friends on an Unreal Engine 4 project that you've got going. So I've thrown up a really awful paint drawing here, it took two minutes, um, and basically we're going to go through this. So Perforce is a, a means of version control, but it's also a means of working together on the same project. Um, now, if you were to ignore the friend side of it over here, if you were to just use you in the server, every time you make commits or stuff, you can save it in the server. So what that allows you to then do is you can say, oh, wait a minute, all of yesterday's work was awful and all broken. I want to roll it back to the day before that. Now that's what source control will let you do. But at the same time, the fact that there's this server here allows your friend to come and be involved with that. So what we're going to do is take a minute here and just imagine that this on the left here is me, this is my computer, and on the right of here this is my friend's computer, and we're both working on the same Unreal Engine 4 project. Now this red box here is going to represent a blueprint, let's call this the first person character blueprint. If I want to work on the first person character blueprint, what I do is I check it out. So I say, hey server, I'm working on this, I want to check it out, like a library. You take this book out the library. So. Oh, wrong side. So I check it out, and that basically then says to this guy, so when he says, I want to work on this, it says, hey server, can I check it out? And the server says, actually, no, you can't, because it's already been checked out by him. There's only one one of each book. So it locks him from editing it. He can, he can still edit it, but don't force it to edit. You know, just accept that someone else is working on it, work on something else in the meantime. So this is locked out. Now let's say he adds three lines of code in here or three blueprints, whatever, and he says, okay, server, I'm finished with it now, I'm going to check it back in. So, back up there, that arrow up there, hiding back in. So now this friend, he sees a little uh, exclamation mark up here in the top right corner, we'll get to that later. Um, and he basically goes, okay, server, refresh, is it checked in now? And the server goes, actually, yeah, look, it's here now. So then he, he checks it out, but before he can check it out, he has to sync it. Because at the minute, these three lines of code are up here in the server. You know, it's checked back in with the new three lines added. So before he can open this and start editing it, he has to sync that particular blueprint there. So from the server, we'll come down with those three lines of code, and they'll be in there, and he can now go ahead and happily edit that. Just delete that. So he can now go ahead and edit that. But to edit, he'd have to check it out, so basically the person on the left couldn't, couldn't edit it at the same time. Um, so that's basically what we're going to be setting up, and it's a really fantastic method, a really great way of working together with your friends on, on any Unreal Engine 4 project, and the fact that it's all integrated into the system itself uh, is really phenomenal. Um, so this video is going to be a bit of an introduction and a setting up of the server side of it. Now, you'll notice here that this server actually appears to be separate from my computer or my friend's computer. Now, it can be, or it can also be on your computer. Um, in these couple of videos, I'm going to go ahead and cover a couple of things. First, we're going to get a server set up. We're going to connect to it locally on our local PC. We're going to connect to it from another computer on the same network. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you how to open it up so that we can connect to it from any network anywhere in the world, basically. Um, so yeah, so let's. So we've got the, the theory there. Well, the other thing I was going to add is this server is actually only a service. It's just a, a Microsoft. It's just a Windows service. So what could be the case? is that actually this on the left is my computer and this is my friend's computer. I'm running the server at the same time as doing my own work here. Now, it really won't affect your performance that much. Uh, at home, what I have is my setup is I have a one gigahertz, one gig of RAM, old laptop that I found under the stairs. It's running Windows Vista. It's an absolutely useless machine, but it makes a great Perforce server. Now, with a with a by extending the storage in it, so I put like a 50 gig hard drive in there, uh, which is actually all I really need now at the minute. With a 50 gig hard drive, 1 gig of RAM, 1 gigahertz, Perforce runs perfectly fine. Perforce it really depends more on your bandwidth. So if you or your friend has got the better internet connection, I recommend that that person hosts it. Um, if you, you or your friend's got the extra laptop and don't want to leave your computer on all the time, then go ahead and do that. I just leave that laptop on all the time. There's multiple ways you can do this, so I'll let you decide where you want to host the server. But, but anyway, enough for paint. Let's go ahead and look at how we're going to set this up. So this link here will be in the description, perforce.com forward slash downloads forward slash helix. And you're going to want to head on down here to server components and the helix versioning engine P4D. This is what you want. So select your operating system. For me, it's on Windows and I'm using 64 bit. We're going to go ahead and download that and just skip registration over here. If you'd like to fill it in, go ahead and fill it in. So I'm going to open that as soon as it's done.
Got to keep an eye on the time, actually. Uh, okay, so you could install this, but personally, I don't install the command line. I don't. I've not actually ever used it. Uh, I just want the top section here, the P4D. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next. Port number. Now, this is important. Leave this as 1666 unless you know for certain you have something else on your network running on that port. Leave this as 1666. Um, if you if you don't have something else running on that port, um, leave it as 1666. If you do, change it to something else. But you need to remember this port number, basically. So 1666 over here. So I'm going to go ahead and hit start. And let that install. And now take note of this here. Now the client applications connection for this server. Now that's my computer name. Desktop dash T1 T41 N2 L O and then colon and then the port number that we set up earlier. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make a note of that. I'm just gonna put it up in here. It's desktop dash T4 N. Was it T4 N? T4 T41 N2 L O. T41 N2 L O. And then it was colon 161666. So we'll just leave that up there. It's not going to connect to anything, but whatever. It's there as a note now. I can close this. Um, okay, so cool. We've finished that. Now what? Well, basically, that's it. That's it for setting the server side of it up. If I go on over to um, oops, sorry, the administrative tools, just bring that up. So if you just press start administ administrative tools and then services, Inside here, you will see that we actually have a new service. If I can find it, P for Perfos. Yeah, the, the versioning engine manages blah, 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 and it's running. So that's the server. That's all it is. It's running in the background. Nothing to it. That's it. That's how you set up the server. Um, in the next, I'll, I'll stop this video here, cut them down, break them up basically. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at getting. Um, what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at the client side, so what the client has to do. The video after that, we'll take a look at Unreal Engine 4 and syncing it up into there. Then we'll take a look at setting the uh, server up to basically be online so that your friend can access it if he's not in your house on the same network. So I'll leave that here for this video, guys. Hope it's been informative about what we're actually doing. I hope you managed to get the server set up just fine. Um, do stay tuned for the next video where we'll take a look at getting the, uh, the client side of it set up. So thanks for, thanks for watching guys, stay tuned and I'll see you in the next video.